just started and uh, 60 minutes to go. See you soon. Oh, who's this? Hello, buddy. You want to play the train? Yeah. All right. We're going to go play with the train. Hey guys, Stas here. Just a quick introduction. This video is going to be a grain glass of, of New Time Brew Tom's Coconut Shy IPA. So uh, sit back and uh, enjoy the brew day footage and I'll come back at the end for my final thoughts. See you then. Hey guys, it's Stas here. We are finishing the, well, finishing. We're just starting the sparge. Uh, everything's looking good and look who we got on camera. <laughs> on camera. Who's this? Ah, oh, it's Mr. Pierce, Floor Sweepers Union. How are you, buddy? Good. <laughs> We're doing a tandem brew. We're both doing the Coconut Shy IPA. So, uh, we'll have to see who comes out better, eh? Alright, I'm approaching the end of the sparge. Look at this weird cavity. I mean, it's, it's not flowing quickly. There's obviously stuff in the bottom, and I've tasted some grain. Doesn't taste like there's sugar in there, so we're all good, but it's just weird that it's compacted a bit. But yeah, we are coming up to a, a boil, as you can see. The temp's at 98, but that's, that'll be down the bottom. Up the top, it wouldn't be that hot. All right, guys, we just hit a uh, hot break, and uh, just stirring it in. Super creamy. I haven't even done my boil volumes yet, just to check that. Um, but yeah, coconut shy PA, it's happening. All right guys, we're at a boil. In with the Columbus, 60 minutes. Woo, let it go. We'll give that a stir. Time for a well flock addition and yeast nutrient. First time using yeast nutrient. Oh dear, we're stuck in there. Oh, that's not a good idea. It's a plastic cup. <laughs> We've just finished the boil and we are recirculating wort through the counterflow chiller. Then it's going to drop it down to 80 degrees before we add our uh, cascade and mosaic and coconut. So it should be water coming out. I do like to collect my water because uh, it makes cleaning easier. There we go. That's coming out nice and hot. And this should start to drop the temperature down. So we're at uh, near enough to 80 degrees. So it's time for hoppage. These are Cascade. These are my own hops that I grew last year. So they're going in. I'll give them a good stir in a minute. And then we've got mosaic which is going into and then oh that smells awesome already then we've got toasted coconut let's get that cracked oh yeah give me the toasted coconut yes alright we're gonna give that a stir okay just gave it a little whirlpool Oops, and it smells pretty bloody awesome. Whoopsie daisy. Let that steep for 20 minutes and then we'll uh, get her into the fermenter. Look at the uh, clarity we've got here. I'm pretty impressed at that. Getting to the end of the uh, transfer and as you can see it's all separating out which is pretty normal. That'll all settle down to the bottom. But yeah, pretty happy with the colour. Getting down to the end of the transfer with all the, the toenails in there. Yes. All right, this is the wart sample. Look at it. Beautiful. Got some separation of the proteins again. What are we coming in at? 10.52. Uh, I can't remember what I was aiming for. I'll, have to, I'll put it up on the screen. Now, 
I know uh, Tom says that he used USO5, but I've got a nice healthy starter of WLP001, which as far as I know is pretty much the same. So I've had a, a starter built up over the last month. So I just took a little bit and put a little bit of the wort in there, uh, pre pre boil wort. Uh, so uh, the yeah the uh, the yeast should be ready to go. Let's, let's get it in. Excellent. All right. Put the cap back on. Where's the cap? Oh, it's in there. Good night, Chopi Eight. Be, shouldn't be too in your face. The uh, coconut chopi. Oh yeah, coconuts there, but it's not really too strong. Getting mosaic. Not much cascade. Let's let's have a taste. Coconut just, coconut just adds this really nice. Yeah, you almost don't even know it's coconut at this stage. Uh, it's it sort of just coats your mouth in a nice kind of oily. It's not oily. It's not oily, but it's, it gives the uh, the illusion of a much uh, thicker beer than it actually is. Yeah, that's nice. I'm getting a little bit of a a vegetal, not not a bad one, but I notice it. Uh, I think that's because of my um, homegrown hops, which are full leaf as opposed to uh, pellets. But should be good. Anyway, uh, friggin' rights to that. So uh, this has been Stas from Stas Brewing signing out. And just for good measure. Boop! Hey guys, it's Sass here. It's a cold Sunday night. Just got back from holidays. I'm on my own. Everyone else is asleep. So uh, it seems like a prime opportunity to get stuck into uh, the coconut shy and see how she's faring now that she's been in the keg for two weeks or so after fermentation. So let's uh Let's finish off this grand glass video. All right guys, so uh, welcome back to my study. So here she is, as you can see, she poured up lovely and clear. Do I have my torch? No, I don't. But uh, the colour, is, it was pretty pretty good lighting. The pour. It's a really nice sort of, let's hold up the light here. It's like a, a light pale yellow straw colour. Um, <clears throat> and a little bit of carbonation, but it's, well, the carbonation is definitely there. It's not a huge amount of head, but uh, that's where I'm, where I'm personally enjoying beers at the moment. But it's not about the carbonation. That smell and the flavour. So let's go in. Yeah. Uh, when this was uh, fairly fresh into the keg, I was getting a real pina colada um, vibe off it. The, co the toasted coconut was just bouncing out of the glass, but the, um, I think it was the mosaic uh, was giving off uh, and the slight tartness. I think there was still a bit of um, dry hot matter in here was giving that mango flavor sort of transitioning into pineapple um, yeah it was it was <laughs> it was amazing it, it tasted really awesome 
but that that's cleaned up a lot so now the, the, the bitterness is Drop back a bit. It's couple. It's aging a little bit. So the hops, the bitterness in the hops, is the first thing to die back. Um, still getting the the fruitiness there, which is balanced really nicely from the uh, the coconut. Lots of coconut. I did. Um, I think I did 250 grams of toasted coconut. And I am still getting a bit of a pina colada kind of vibe. Definitely tropical fruits and coconut. Oh, it's, yeah, it, it smells smells like a um, a tropical cocktail coconut. Really awesome. Let's go in for a taste. Again, flavour-wise, pretty similar. Lots of coconut. Really broad, full. Uh, toasted coconut gives it a slightly the illusion of a slightly thicker mouthfeel. I think I said that in my brew day footage, um, but it's it's not that full bodied. It's quite probably a medium bodied, but it gives the impression of a um, a much thicker beer. Um, bitterness is definitely there. Um, I'd probably like to boost the um, the mosaic up a little bit, perhaps um, just because I was really enjoying that pina colada vibe, which is still still there, but it's it's died off a bit. The, the coconut's still still right up there, but um, <clears throat> um, yeah, the tropical fruits are dying down a little bit. Maybe just boost the mosaic and maybe add some citra. Or I don't know. Um, you could also. I mean, I fermented this with WLP 001 as opposed to what Tom recommends. If you want, um, if you want to know the recipe, don't ask me. It's not my recipe to give out. Go on, go and ask Tom. I'll put a link to the video where he uh, where he puts it. He lays it all out in a line. So um, yeah, if you want to try this, um, it's it's a really really interesting beer. Would I brew it again? Probably. I, like, this would be very, very smashable. Very smashable. Mine's a little bit more than his uh, in terms of alcohol. This is five and a half. Um, I think his is four and a half. So, But it, it certainly doesn't feel like a, um, a heavy beer. Uh, but yeah, I think um, this is an absolute winner and um, really, really different... Um, take on the pale ale. Um, um, you know, the pale ales are you know notorious to get right. You can't really hide behind any flavour. Like it's all out there. It's not quite as in intense as a lager in terms of nowhere to hide. But there ain't a lot of places to hide in terms of pale ale. And you know, a lot of people kind of shoot straight down the middle. They don't want to go too far one way or the other. This is definitely different and you know, I, Tom, uh, I can see why um, Harry was willing to, you know, put this through on his on his bar and why it did so well in the competition that you entered in and you know, again, big thank you for uh, sharing this with us, uh, with us, the, the, the greater Brewtube community. Um, yeah, top job. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'm looking forward to enjoying the rest of this glass and the rest of the keg. So, um, Tom and I said I, I messaged Tom uh, direct. I'm going to be posting this. As I said, I gave him a bit of gave him a bit of shit um, when he said he was going to do a leaderboard, um, but he didn't have the recipe. I gave him a bit of shit, so he posted the recipe. So me being trying to be a word of my, uh, man of my word. I'm going to post him a sample. Yes, it's halfway around the world, but uh, if we went out to drink, if I met him out, I'd buy him a pint. It's about the same, more or less. Anyway, I'll stop waffling on. So this has been Stas wrapping up the grain to glass for the Coconut Sharpie as brewed by new to homebrew Tom. Um, 
yeah, signing out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.